Hey guys, what's up? It's Moz here, and welcome back to another video. So, I know I haven't made a proper tutorial in a while, so in today's video, I'm gonna be showing you guys how you can live stream to YouTube or YouTube gaming, as some people still call it. And I'm also gonna be showing you guys how you can add like donation alerts, subscriber alerts, and things like that because I know they're pretty popular these days. But before I do get started, I want you guys to scroll down and comment below who is your favorite streamer. Literally, just comment below saying my favorite streamer is, and then just like fill in the blank. Also, if you guys could hit that like button if you end up enjoying the video, I'd greatly appreciate it. But other than that, let's get on with the video. Alright, so the first two requirements you're gonna want to meet in order to live stream properly to YouTube is is one having a good computer and two having a solid internet connection and i do want to clarify that having a good laptop will probably get the job done but i highly recommend having something like a desktop over a laptop when it comes to streaming and i personally like right now i have a pretty high-end pc and i'm gonna have my specs on the screen right now for those of you guys who are interested and one thing i do want to mention for those of you guys who are new to streaming is that a macbook does not really qualify as a good streaming laptop if you're doing anything more than just like streaming your desktop and like your webcam because it really just can't handle all that cpu stress at once i personally love my macbook and i wish it was other way around but there's not that good Good for like cpu intensive tasks if that makes sense and uh if you got like a gaming pc or a video editing pc within like the past two to three years then it should qualify as a pretty good streaming computer anyways moving on from that the next thing you need like i said before is a good internet connection and more specifically your upload speed if you're not too sure what your upload speed is already then just head over to speedtest.net i'm gonna have it linked in the description below and on the screen right now and just go ahead and hit that button that says go it's pretty hard to miss but anyways uh let a test run and it's gonna return your ping your download speed and your upload speed now a huge tip for you guys is if you want the most accurate results make sure that when you're doing this you run your like test on a wired connection using an ethernet cable i highly recommend streaming while on an ethernet cable too because then you're gonna have the most stable connection to youtube when you're live and so anyways for the upload speed it would probably be near impossible to stream content without experiencing a ton of drops and overall lag if you have an upload speed of two or below i personally think that anywhere between four and five or above for your upload speed will result in a pretty stable and consistent streaming experience anyways moving on from that i want to talk about the software that we're going to be using to stream and for this video we're actually going to be using streamlabs obs which is a much better version of the normal OBS that I'm sure most of you guys are used to seeing by now. So this is what I personally use whenever I stream, and I'll show you guys why in a bit. And for those of you guys who just haven't downloaded this software already, if you guys could use the download link that I'm going to have linked in the description below, I would greatly appreciate it. Most YouTubers would probably not admit this to their viewers, but every install that someone does using the link in the description below, I'm going to get paid $1 for it from Streamlabs, and trust me, it's all good if you don't want to support me that way, I totally understand, but I'd greatly appreciate it if you did hit that link and download it from there. But anyways, once you are on the website, you should see it like a interface kind of like this one right here, and from there, just go ahead and click the button that says download beta for Streamlabs OBS, save it to wherever you want, I'd probably just save it to my desktop if I was you, because you don't really need it for too long as it is just an installation file but anyways go through the installation and when you open it up you should see a screen similar to this one right here and on the chance that you don't see this and you actually see a login screen like this one right here don't worry either way you're on the right place and you're basically exactly where you're supposed to be so on the chance that you don't see this and you actually see this go up here to the top right hit login and you should be good to go from there hit the youtube button right here under the twitch button and on top of the mixer one and it's going to ask you to sign into your youtube account but before that it's just going to check your browser before accessing the website and then from here like i said before just type in your email address and your password so i'm just going to quickly do that right now with you guys and also i feel like i need to say this but don't worry they're not going to steal your account they only want you to sign in so that they can properly track whenever you get like a new subscriber or a new super chat and things like that so from there when you type in your password it might ask you to choose your account or your brand account like it's asking me right here so make sure that you choose the account that is actually your youtube channel and it should say youtube or google plus right under it so click that i'm just gonna click on my second channel that i don't really use ever and then from there just scroll down and then find the button that says allow it's just like a little blue button from there you click that and you should be good to go but now you're basically signed into your account and if you ever do see like a window like this one right here that's just like taking you to your dashboard in streamlabs all you have to do from there is just close out of it and then from there click the youtube button one more time and it should just let you sign in right away from there hit continue if you see this here and then that's basically it now you're signed into your youtube account and there might be a chance that you might get a window that looks like this one right here i should put it up on the screen right now and if you do just go ahead and hit the setup later button that i do have like in a rectangle right now and i'll be showing you guys how to add alerts and stuff like that later on in the video so that just isn't needed like right in the beginning set it up later and you should be good to go so i'm gonna quickly log out of my second channel account and log back into my main account but while i'm doing that i want to tell you guys about an error that you might get and that's an error that's gonna look like the one that's on screen right now it's probably not gonna show up for all of you but if you do get an error saying that your account just isn't enabled for live streaming like this one shows you guys right now like on the screen then all you have to do is go to youtube.com and then from here all you have to do is go up to the top right where your icon is from there click on creator studio and then once you're there you should be able to go to the live stream tab that should be on the left side of your screen so once you find that just go ahead and click on it and it should take you to a page similar to this one right here and it's not going to show you guys like the interface that you see right away it's probably going to say something like get started with live streaming or something like that so all you have to do is literally just hit the get started button and then it should show you something similar to the one that you see on my screen right now from there just hit the i'm setup button in the little error and you should be good to go 
All right, so anyways, moving on from that, I've signed back into my normal personal YouTube account, and so your your screen is gonna look nothing like mine, and that's okay. Every content creator sets up their like scenes and sources completely differently, and you're probably gonna do the same thing. Also, one thing I do want to quickly mention before like like I go on with the video is, if you guys have been enjoying the video so far, I'd greatly appreciate it if you guys could scroll down, hit that like button. Seriously, it would mean a lot. I feel like this video is gonna help out a ton of people. But anyways, let's get back on with the video. So one thing I do want to show you guys for those of you guys who are like completely new to OBS is how to add like a uh, like a screen recording to like actually like record your screen and also how to add a webcam i know most of you guys who are experienced with obs or like the people who have already used it before already know how to do this so just skip ahead like maybe like 30 seconds into the video and you should be good to go but anyways so for most of you guys it's probably just gonna be like a black screen so i'm gonna quickly make mine the same as you guys all right so this is what your screen probably looks like right now and so from there all you have to do is just go up here where the plus is and hit add source from there you're gonna see a ton of things right here and don't worry about the widgets i'm gonna go into detail on those later on but the first thing we want to do is add a display capture and what display captures is basically it literally exactly what it sounds like it's gonna be recording your screen right so you're probably not gonna see this bottom part that says the add existing source but you will see this on the top so I'm just gonna name it monitor and I'm naming it monitor because it is my monitor that we're gonna be adding as a source right so hit add new source and then from here if you have more than one monitor you can select which one you want to record or add to like your actual OBS scene I'm just gonna do my first one the one that you guys are already seeing right now I'm gonna click display zero from there make sure you capture your cursor because of course you do want to be able to show where your cursor is to your viewers from there go ahead and hit done and you should be good to go and right off the bat there's a pretty good chance that your OBS might be already too zoomed into the source it might not happen for you or it might but for me right now it did so all you have to do is go to the top left and just drag it in and it's gonna become smaller and then you can just adjust it so drag it back to the top left corner drag it down and that's basically exactly how the size of my monitor should be sometimes it glitches out and gets like too zoomed in based on like your resolution things like that but it's pretty simple to fix just like I showed you guys right there and so moving on from that the next thing I want to show you guys is how you can add your webcam and the same actually applies for if you have like an Elgato game capture or something that you record your console with all you do is go up here and hit add new source from there go to video capture device hit add source and then from there a hey, there i am but anyways from there you're probably not gonna see this stuff right here but you'll just name your webcam or like your logitech or your game capture or whatever you want to name it then from there hit add new source and then from here you can basically select whatever you want to do so if my console was on right now then you'd probably see my playstation right now and if you want to add your webcam then you do the same thing just go to logitech hd or select whatever your webcam is from there you can scroll down and just change like the resolution things like that if you need to but i'm actually going to show you guys how you can add something if you already have an existing source available so i'm just going to remove this as if we didn't do anything already then i'm going to go to the plus go to video capture device one more time hit add source and then from here it's going to actually be able to pick it from a different scene that you already had so it already knows that i have this exact thing in my fortnite one I think so I hit add existing source and there I am so I can just make myself smaller like that and this is usually about the size people put the webcams and one cool thing I want to show you guys is if you hold the alt key on your keyboard it's usually on the left side of your space bar and then if you drag it in from the left so as you guys can see there's a bunch of like space right there that I'm not there so definitely doesn't need to be in like my actual webcam so if I hold the alt key and drag it in from the left it can actually cut off the side and you guys can only see me right there and that's what a lot of streamers do I know Pokimane does this and a lot of other people they just make the webcam like a square and then like place it right here because then it doesn't take up too much of the screen honestly it makes a lot of sense i personally like to keep mine somewhere like this just because i like to have like the extra space around me but it's not too much because you guys saw there's a ton of space here before but obviously i did cut it out in this like overlay right here but that's basically how you add like a webcam and how you can record your screen on obs and one thing I do want to show you guys for those of you guys who just can't afford to like pay for like a cool designer like the cool design like the one I have right here or like other kind of overlays is you can actually go to the themes tab right here and they'll actually have a bunch of pre-made themes that you can select from to actually add to your stream and I think that's amazing. You can filter it out and you can find like actual like layouts for your OBS stream that are going to look pretty sick. So if I just click on one random one like okay I'll click on this one. I obviously I probably wouldn't use this one but it looks pretty sick. It's animated on the back. They have this like animated stream starting soon thing. They have this right here and then she has the little webcam right here here they'll give you all the things to work with and all you have to do is just place your webcam where you want it and place your gameplay where you want it the rest will work out by itself but anyways i'm gonna go back to my editor right here and i'm gonna run you guys through the settings which i think personally are the best streaming settings for obs so all you have to do to go to the settings is go up here to the top right where the little settings gear is i'm gonna click on it and then this is something that you should see right here so i'm gonna run through some of the tabs and the first one is gonna be the stream tab and right off the bat since you sign in to streamlabs obs with your youtube account or your twitch account or whatever it is it should automatically grab your stream key right here here. Anyways, moving on from that, we have the output tab, so I'm going to click on that. And one thing I highly recommend most people 
do. I know a lot of streamers use the advanced output mode, but definitely use the simple one. I find that it works perfectly and you really don't have to mess with anything because Streamlabs OBS does a great job at finding out what's best for your computer. So personally for me, I use the encoder NVENC and this is only available if you have an Nvidia graphics card. If you have an AMD one, then you should see something that says AMD something. But if you don't see that, then just go ahead and use the software X264 and then this can use your actual processor to encode for your stream. For audio bitrate, I usually leave that at 160 and video bitrate is something that you have to pay attention to your upload speed for. Now, I personally don't think that you should ever go past 6,000 for your video bitrate because I know some of the biggest streamers like Pokimane, um, Kura JD, Nadeshot, and a bunch of other people all use 6,000 or less as far as I'm aware, so definitely don't try pushing past 6,000 because it's really not needed at all. Alright, so right now I should have like a little upload to bitrate like conversion ratio thing on the screen right now and it's just like my recommended settings for you guys to use in case you have a certain upload speed and use your bitrate based off of that. So I have like an upload speed of like 11 and I still use 4500 because that works perfectly for me and it results in like some pretty HD streams so I highly recommend if you have a good upload speed anywhere but over like 5 or like anywhere over like 6 or 7 then just use 4500 because that's like the perfect middle ground for anyone in that range and if you have somewhere between like 1, 2, 3, and 4 then probably use whatever's on the screen that I recommend for you guys right now. But anyways you don't really have to do anything more here the rest is just like recording settings so from there we can move on to the audio and for this for your desktop audio device you want to make this wherever the audio goes in your computer. So for me it goes to my headset like my Astro so this is what I had to select for me my, right here. But for you you might have to do like your headphones or like your mix amp or something like that. Um, Desktop audio device 2 I leave that disabled because I don't have two headphones. For mic auxiliary device 1 I make that like my actual microphone the one that you guys are hearing me on right now. And I don't have multiple mics so I just only use one and I disable other options. From there we can move on to video. Alright so your base canvas resolution is actually going to be what your screen dimensions are. So for me mine is actually 2560 x 1440. I have mine set at 1080p I really don't know why I should probably set it to this but again I personally don't care because it works fine for me but on the chance that you don't know what your actual screen dimensions are or in case like you have a weird screen dimension or you play on like a TV or something random all you have to do is go down here to the bottom left and just type in display and once you do that, just hit change display settings and you should see a new window appear like this one right here. Scroll down until you find the resolution tab or like the resolution box right here. And the recommended one is more than likely going to be what your actual screen dimensions are. So mine is 2560x1440 like I told you guys. So if you go back to Streamlabs and then type in 2560x1440, that's one I should personally be using. But just use whatever shows up right here. More than likely it's going to be 1920x1080. And then for your output scale resolution, this is exactly what you're going to be streaming to YouTube or Twitch or whatever service that you're actually streaming on in that quality. So personally, I stream at 900p and it shows up as 720p, but realistically speaking, it looks way better than 720p and it doesn't look as crispy as 1080p does. Now, I really don't recommend trying to push a 1080p stream unless you have a really good PC and a really good internet connection because then it's probably worth it. But other than that, I'd probably just go with 1280x720 because that's almost what every single YouTuber or Twitch streamer does unless they're like really high up top in that scene and they have like the best internet connection possible and the best PC possible and things like that. Now, I just like I said before, I personally type in 1600 and x900 by myself and then I click that because I personally think it looks better than 720p and it doesn't look as good as 1080p but it basically comes really close without putting that extra strain on my computer. From there make sure that your downscale fi filter is Lanxos. I have no idea how to pronounce it. I think that's how you say it. For FPS type leave it at common FPS values and then for common FPS values just do 60. In case you can't push a 60 FPS stream and your computer just isn't good enough your internet speed just isn't good enough go ahead change that down to 30 and maybe make your uh, output skill resolution to, uh, 1280 x720. Anyways moving on from that we I don't really personally care about hotkeys or the advanced thing right here. Scene collection is not really that needed either. Notifications, definitely hit enable notifications and all that good stuff. It works fine, I think, how I have it set right here. Appearance, again, doesn't really matter too much. You can turn off night mode if you do want to. I actually personally like to have mine in like light mode, but I know a lot of the people watching are probably going to want night mode, so I'll leave it on in night mode. And then remote control, again, isn't needed. So once you've done all that, just go ahead and hit done, and you should be good to go. So now I'm actually going to show you guys how you can add like all the alerts and all those cool things like this one right here. I think if I could test it and hit like subscriber, yeah, so that's like my little like animation that shows up whenever I get like a subscriber or like a donation or a sponsor or something. Whatever I'm streaming, yours are probably gonna look different, but I'm gonna basically be showing you guys how you can add things like that. Alright, so one quick little thing I need to show you guys how to do before we actually move on to like donations and alerts and all those things is how to actually add like that little alert box onto your screen. So all you have to do is go to this little plus button right here, then go to the widgets, hit alert box, and it does say essential because it is pretty essential. And then from there, just hit add source. And I already have it right here, but basically all you do is just add new source. And then you can pick how like big you want to be, like width, height, all that good stuff. Change the FPS if you want to. You can make a 60 FPS if you do. And then from there, that's basically it. Hit done and you should be good to go. So I'm gonna 
gonna quickly uh, delete this one because I don't need it anymore. I already have one that's right here and I made it caps alerts and then so from there whenever I like hit sponsor or something it shows up like that and it has a little alert like sound too which I'm gonna be showing you guys how to do in a second. But anyways guys let's move on to the next step. So all you have to do is go up here to the dashboard on the top left and then from there you should see a whole new interface appear. So now walking through the, all the stuff on the left it's really not too important like you can go to your donations and see who donated to you, your members, all that stuff. The first thing I want to show you guys is donation settings. So go here and make sure that you link your PayPal account to your Streamlabs account so that when people pay you it actually goes to the right email address. And one other thing you want to do is go to the settings and then scroll down and this is going to be the link that people actually pay you at. So this is the link that you want to promote every year like in your descriptions or like your Twitch or like wherever this is the link that people are going to click whenever they want to donate to you so they'll go here they'll type in whatever they want to pay you from there it's going to go over here and it's going to go straight to your paypal or like it'll go to your credit card if actually i think it can go to your credit card i'm not too sure oh you can add cryptocurrency now i gotta add this but anyways oh wait let me go back now from there you really don't have to do anything else in the account tab so from there let's maximize the widgets one and jump into the alert box so I'm going to actually make this full screen just so it covers up more like my actual screen and I can have no problems reading it. But anyways, so right away, you want to make sure that you check all these things right here and you don't have to worry about like actually copying and pasting like the link. It's not needed. So from there, we can scroll down and go to the general settings. So these are the settings that are going to apply to all these other tabs right off the bat. So if you want to like make your text animation like layout default to like having the text on top of the GIF or having the text under the GIF or whatever, you can set that up. You can also set up the alert delay right off the bat and that's going to apply to every single thing right here. So your donations will show up five seconds later. Your subscription subscribers will show up five seconds later things like that it's not too needed you can do all this like manually in each of these tabs but i just thought i'd mention it anyways but from there we can go to the donations tab and so it's pretty simple all you have to do is just enable your donation alerts pick the layout thing you want so for me as you guys saw first off the gif shows up and then the text shows up on top of the gif that's usually the most popular one that most people do but in case you want it to show up so that like the gif shows up and then the text shows up under it so i'll just quickly click that i'll go ahead and save it then i'm going to go to back to like my editor and then go down here and test my donation so as you can see there's a gif and there's like the text because i had it show up under it now but i'm going to go back because obviously that just looks awful so go to the alert box and then from there go to donations go down and then let's make it text on top of the gif from there, I want an animation that fades in and then fades out whenever it shows the alert and then it goes away. You can also change what kind of message you want to show up. So name is obviously going to be the YouTuber's name who donated to you and amount is going to be how much they donated. So leave these two things right there, but you can also just change the text that you want to add. So you can say, um, Moz threw me this many dollars, whatever, or like Moz donated this many dollars or Moz the goat donated this much money. And then for text animation, you can add some if you want. I personally don't like to have it. And then for image, this is where you'd actually just add like a GIF. So right here, I already showed you guys what mine looks like but you can just add literally what any any kind of gift that you want to do just drag it drop it into here i used to have like a picture of like drake dancing or something i might be able to find it actually actually i can't find it but one cool thing is they do have a ton of stock images that you can use in case you don't have any gifts that you want to use right off the bat so just go here stock files images find one that you like hit select and then from there all you have to do pick a sound that you want to play with that donation you can add a sound volume i think it's really good to keep it really low because otherwise it's going to be way too high make sure you add an alert duration too because obviously you can have your alert be like 158 seconds long which is almost like two minutes i think wait oh my god i'm stupid that's almost like three minutes actually but anyways so i like to keep my alerts only up on the screen for seven seconds then they go away and I have like a one second alert delay so like the text shows up one second after the gif starts playing because then it looks the best and then from there that's basically it you can add like font settings too if you want to change the font and things like that all this is literally just personal pre preference to however you like it so anyways, once you saved your settings and all that stuff and did, went through and did it for subscribers and members and super chats and like merch, I don't really know how the merch one works to be honest. I have it disabled because obviously I don't sell merch. You guys want me to sell merch? Let me know. But uh, anyways, uh, so make sure that you enable each of the ones that you do and then go through and customize it to however you like it. Add a sound if you want there to be a sound. Add a sound volume. Make sure you mess with the font. Make sure you mess with the alert variations if you want to and all that good stuff but honestly that really does wrap it up for the video guys also let me know how you guys do like my new like little uh animation animated like uh webcam thing or whatever it cycles through like all my social medias on the bottom which i think is insanely awesome all right guys so one thing i do want to say i'm just throwing this back into the video i actually just finished recording the video and i realized there's one thing i forgot to show you guys and uh so like right down here on the bottom left is how you go live you just hit the go live button and the coolest thing about streamlabs obs is when you go live your stream chat pops up right here on the side right off the bat and you can literally 
read your stream while you're like actually streaming right you don't have to like open up a new window with like your like pop out chat and things like that and the cool thing is when you're live it's automatically going to switch to this tab right here and when it does that then you can see all the people who have been subscribing all the people who have been donating and all that good stuff like for me for some reason it's not like updated because it's saying i've gotten like no subs in 20 days that's obviously incorrect but anyway so i think it usually always updates whenever you're like live but so you're gonna see this and you're gonna see your little preview right here i highly recommend keeping the preview pretty small because then it's not gonna use up too much of your graphics card or your like your cpu to process the image and then you're also gonna see like your entire live chat on the right side which is insane you can also see your viewer count on the top right and you can also hide it if you do want to by clicking on the viewer count and one last thing i want to mention is there might be a chance that you accidentally added multiple mics right here in the mixer because sometimes your webcam will add its own mic and you're also gonna have your normal mic so go down and make sure that you mute the mic that's on your webcam this isn't gonna be a glitch that happens for everyone but it did happen to me so i want to make sure that i did cover it for you guys so make sure that you mute the other mic in so you don't have like a little echo thing that's going on and then from there you're basically good to go make sure you have your desktop audio set at a decent volume and also have your personal actual microphone set at a good volume and then from there you should be good to go how the hell have i been recording for 46 minutes what all right i'm gonna say my outro now guys but anyways guys i hope you guys did enjoy the video if you did please remember that like button share this video with your friends and go ahead and hit that subscribe button if y'all already because we are on the way to 200,000 subscribers which is still insane to me somehow and all help is appreciated but other than that i guess i'll see you guys in the next one peace